Hey guys, John here. Welcome back to the series, How to Use Pigments. This is video 44, and today we are talking about macros. So what are macros and what do they do? So macros are user-defined knobs that we can control different parameters with with just one knob, which is very, very cool. So you might notice on different presets that you have, these are going to be assigned down here to different kinds of things, maybe effects or distortion or who knows whatever the creator decided to do. And it kind of gives you a patch that has much more depth, right? So if you have a lot of different things that you can change within that patch, one patch really turns into multiple different types of patches depending on where you change things, right? So I did a video on a, a TB303 recreation, and there was the cutoff, the resonance, and distortion to kind of play around with those knobs that you can automate and really come up with different timbres of different sounds. So with that being said, let's kind of make just a interesting patch here. So we have an analog engine over here. Let's kind of turn this down a little bit like that. So maybe let's make something kind of plucky, right? Let's bring in our second oscillator here. Let's drop this down an octave, something like that. Maybe we want to have some unison, right? Let's go eight voices of unison. Okay, that's a cool little spot to start off with. Now let's go over to our effects here. Now let's remove these default things here and we're just probably gonna add them again. But anyway, let's go to, for example, add our delay right back. I kind of do that a lot of the times. So let's say we have a delay, right? And that's cool. Right, so maybe you wanna crank it a little bit more, maybe like 29%. And typically drag down the slow pass frequency. Okay, now let's say this is a little bit too much. Let's bring it down to maybe 25, 26 or something like that. Or 25, make it easy, right? Great, now let's say we want to add another delay here. So let's go over here and add another delay. Let's put this first one to maybe something dotted, right? Let's go to maybe like a one eighth dotted. Right, and let's have the second delay. Have this in straight time and maybe one over four. And let's change this low pass frequency a little bit here. So we have something like this. Great, now let's add a shimmer to make it a little bit more spicy. So we kind of have this basic patch working, right? Now let's say we wanted a knob here to turn on and off all the effects at the same time. So what we do, we grab this M1, this macro one, and let's drag this to our dry wet, drag this to our dry wet, and drag this over here to our dry wet. Now the way to set this up properly, let's say we like this these settings here with this 25%, this 20%, and this 29% of our effects, and we want the knob at maximum to have those values. So what we need to do, is let's hover our mouse over and say this first one is 25%. Let's turn this all the way down. So when it's off, it's gonna be off. And let's turn this macro up to 25. Now by chance, we just happen to ha happen to land on 25. So this one is good. Now over here, this is gonna be 20%. So let's drag this all the way down and let's look at this here, 25. So we need to drag this down to 0 0.20 to make it that 20%. Now on the shimmer here, we have 29%. So let's drag this up all the way down and let's bring this up to 20 or 0.29, which is gonna to correspond to 29. And if you have any trouble kind of doing some fine adjustments, always hold right click and that makes it a lot easier to do fine preci precision stuff like this. Now for macro one, we said, okay, we want this to be effects. So let's double click this and let's type FX, enter. Now all the way to the bottom, as you can see, all these effects are gonna be off. Now we turn this to the right. Now it's just how we had it before. And now since we have our maximum value, we can always go anywhere in between and we can see these little lights moving corresponding to their values. And it's perfect like that. Very cool there. So now let's say we like this patch, but we wanna have some really cool distortion to it. So let's go to a distortion right over here. Let's go maybe to something like a tape, right? Let's turn our effects down, which is handy right here have a drive something like that so let's say we like this type of distortion here at this max value so 82 percent so let's grab macro number two and let's drag it to the dry wet and we said we liked 82 let's turn this all the way down turn this up to 0.82 right over here pass it a little bit right click and bring it back 0.82 and let's double click this macro two and call it distortion boom there we go so now all the way to the left this dry wet's gonna be zero. And if we drag it all the way to the right, it's gonna be the value that we liked before. Now we can bring in our effects with a distortion. And now is the kind of a spot where you might think, oh, maybe that's a little bit too much distortion. Now we have this conveniently on a slider or on a knob here. 
and we can dial it back just a little bit to our liking which is great. And now something that's also kind of typical here, if we go to our filter, let's say, let's go to this MS-20, which is one of my personal favorites. Let's maybe drag our cutoff something down like this. Like, okay, we like that. We want this to be our lowest value here. So let's turn off our effects and our distortion to kind of hear this. We like that as our lowest value. Let's take macro number three and drag this to the cutoff and increase this all the way maybe here. And now this is a setting where if you're if you want to set your maximum and minimum values, let's go all the way to something like this, maybe 0.34, and let's crank this knob over here. Let's let it cut off to keep organized. And all the way to the right is going to be this maximum value here. Let's say maybe we want a little bit more, right? So we're going to grab this pie and increase it here all the way to the left is going to be our lowest value then over here and maybe we think oh maybe that's a little bit too dark let's bring it up just a little bit here so now that's going to be our new lowest value and our highest value is going to be that so now we have a handy knob over here and we have one macro left over now not every single patch needs to use all four but if you can it's kind of cool because you can really expand on your patch like this so in a situation like this especially with the ms20 filter i would put this over here on the resonance so i'd maybe put our resonance turns all the way down for now and let's change our cutoff something like around here So maybe start right over here, maybe 0.432 or something like that. Now with our resonance, let's name it, let's put res for now. All the way to the right here is going to be our max value, and we can kind of see what it's doing here. So what I'll do is let's say this, especially with this filter, if, it, if the resonance gets too high, it'll enter self-oscillation. Maybe you want that, maybe you don't. But if you don't, this is kind of a cool spot where you can kind of look at this graph and say, okay, right there is self-oscillation. Let's bring this back a little bit over here to kind of contain that just a bit here. And then now the maximum value of this resonance knob won't self-resonate. So basically what we've done now, we have, we've mapped this effects over here to our delay dry wet, our second delay dry wet, and our shimmer reverb dry wet. Next up, we did the distortion with the dry wet here, and then we have our cutoff and our filter. So now if this, this boring patch that we started off kind of, let's put this maybe at the top here, let's put this all the way down so it's kind of default. We made this cool sound, now we have add some effects to it. Maybe add a little distortion. Drag down our cutoff. Increase that resonance. And then maybe we want to put it on a sequencer or something like that. Put it to, let's see, uh, harmonic minor, which is a very perfect uh, scale for this. It's one of my favorites here. And let's go to a random here and then let's regenerate every bar. So that's, very, that's something pretty cool. And we have some drums here, so let's see what that sounds like. So yeah, in a nutshell, that is the power of macros, and that's why they're so cool, because you can really make one patch that started off just kind of boring a couple saw waves, and that's about it, and we put some different effects on it and control those effects dynamically how we want to, and then we have pretty much a patch with a lot of possibilities. And keep in mind, all of these can be modulated or automated later on in your session, so if you have kind of a build coming up, you can do something you new. Know. Open up the cutoff or add more effects or something like that, more distortion. It's really up to you in that case, but that is macros. That's what they do. And definitely recommend to highly use these because once you do, you kind of like, oh, I could put a macro on that. I could put a macro on this. I could put a macro on that. And then at some point you're going to realize, dang, I only have four macros to, to uh, work with. But 
keep in mind that's what they uh, that's what they do they're very cool so hopefully you learn something and uh i believe this is the end of the course here so if you made it all the way to the end of this one congratulations it was a very long course of 44 videos However, that's not to say if there's maybe updates or something changes or if there's a request about pigments, we can always add it to this playlist, which is totally cool. But I think we've basically covered everything here. So yeah, if there's anything I that you felt I missed out on or that you didn't feel like was completely explained, please let me know and we can always address that in a future video. So yeah, thanks for watching and we'll see you in another video.